type of words. And indeed, members on my left have used them in questions. The member for Prospect has the call. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank you too, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the call prior to the interjections from the opposition. I would direct my question. Order. My question without notice, Mr. Speaker, is directed to the Prime Minister. And I ask you, Prime Minister, if you are able to explain to the House the principles of the government's policies for a multicultural Australia and indicate whether the government intends to abandon those principles as some sections of the community are repeatedly suggesting. The Honourable the Prime Minister. Speaker, order. The House will come to order. This, this Labor Minister. government has consistently supported policies for multicultural Australia, which are built upon tolerance and desire. Order. Members on my right will cease interjecting, as will members on Mr. my Speaker, left. Mr Speaker, this, this government has consistently supported policies for multicultural Australia, which are built upon tolerance and designed to encourage the, the tolerance. member for more might be might be put out for interjecting. Mr. Speaker, never has the value of these policies been more apparent Order. than is the case now. Policies to encourage social harmony and cohesion, policies to increase equity and participation for ethnic groups in the community, policies which encourage the expression of different cultural identities as a democratic right like any other, policies to increase our ability to call on the skills, talents and ambitions of all Australians. These are the policies of an expanded, humane democracy, Mr. Speaker, a lively democracy, a democracy which is increasingly attracting the interest and admiration of other countries, a, a democracy which I think Australians should be very proud of. A multicultural Australia is a reality deriving from decades of immigration, but a tolerant, viable, successful multicultural Australia is a reality deriving from hard work, compromise and imagination. And I remind honourable members on both sides of the House, Mr Speaker, that a lot of the initiative came from the last Liberal government, Malcolm Fraser's. And I won't have, uh, have to remind the member for Goldstein because he was an adviser at the time to Mr Fraser. And I probably won't have to remind the Shadow Minister for Immigration because he supports multiculturalism as defined in the national agenda. But I do have to remind the Leader of the Opposition. I do have to remind the Leader of the Opposition. This is what Malcolm Fraser said. He said this on the, on the 9th of March 1982. I would like to say here that the development of multiculturalism in Australia in recent years has helped us enormously as a community in gaining the wider understanding which the successful management of interdependence will increasingly call for. And he, he referred to multiculturalism. He says it's become. Order the Prime Minister, might we? Resume his seat. The Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. Order. Does the Leader of the Opposition have a point of order? Yes, I do, Mr. Speaker. I ask that you instruct the member for um, to withdraw his remarks. Order. What remark did the member for do? What he, he order. The House will come to order. He's got to withdraw. He yelled if the, out. If the Leader of the National Party continues to interject, I'll deal with him. The Leader of the Opposition on your point of order. What was the remark, the, this, the remark he made is that Houston is a racist, and I asked him to withdraw. If the member for Page made that yeah, remark, he should withdraw. withdraw. Order! I withdraw it. Leader, the Prime Minister. Members on my left will cease interjecting. Mr. Mr Speaker, Malcolm Fraser, Malcolm Fraser also had this to say. Order! He referred to multiculturalism as, be, as becoming a symbol of a transforming vision of Australian society. Now, these are the references of a former leader of a coalition government. But I now quote the Leader of the Opposition in a speech of the Liberal Party in Western Australia in July this year, where he referred to multiculturalism as an absolutely a fundamental mistake. A classic example of the politics of division, he said. We should never have multiculturalism, he said. All we do is elevate a few professional ethic, ethnics. That's his definition, Mr Speaker. That's the current leader of the, of the coalition's definition. He says the policies aren't working. He says the policies of managing diversity are dividing the country. He says it's a failure. To everyone else it looks like a considerable success, but to Dr Hewson it's a failure. And when I quote him, when I quote him faithfully from the transcript, he says that I'm a blatant liar. A blatant liar. And goes on to call my speech to Fecker Order. a political stunt. Well, let me just say this, Mr. Speaker. As for the charge I'm a blatant liar, I direct him to his speech and I read it. 
uh, from the quotation, the politics of division, not the politics of one nation. Multiculturalism, another classic example. The politics of division, not the politics of one nation. Absolutely a fundamental mistake in this country. We're a multicultural society, yes, but we should never have multiculturalism. All we do is elevate a few professional ethnics. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, that's just an example of Dr. Hewson's megalomania and paranoia. All those organisations, individuals, and individuals not in his power are his enemies. All those bits of Australia which he did not make or does not control perforce must go. That's his view. They, they should make way for the new order, the same drab conservative order that people had in vogue in the end of the 1970s. So, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the fact is, unlike, unlike Mr. Kennett, I won't sue him for defamation. That is, that is, that is in, in, a, in, a, in a display of sensitivity, that is, having blackguarded the Victorian government by billboard Warn across the Melbourne Higgins. with the first reference to him, he runs to the courts. Unlike Kennett, I won't sue you for the same charge that you've made against me, unfairly and baselessly. Unfairly and baselessly. Order. The, the Mr. member Speaker, for Lowe will cease interjecting your own name. Mr. Dr Hewson loathes multiculturalism. He loathes this, this view that diversity in Australia is good, that the role of ethnic groups and uh, migrant groups in society is a bad thing. He loathes the people who have worked to make this Mayo. a good, humane society. It's all, about, it's all about wanting to create a society in his own image. That is, that is that it, survival of the fittest. If you're not a millionaire, you're a layabout. If you can't go and grab the opportunities, there's nothing there for you. That's his view, Mr. Speaker. That vicious, Order. that vicious view, the sort of get the Gordon Gecko view of life, the Gordon Gecko view of life. Greed is good, and if it isn't sort of satisfied by greed, it can't be of any substance or value. That's the sort of view that put that thing, which which would ob obviously is a total difference with the instinct and attitude of, of uh, Malcolm Fraser, a former coalition prime minister. No, he's not a hero. But on this, but on this, on this, he always had principles. Order. If, if on this the member for Benelong interjects again, I'll deal. On this, he had he had clear principles. He always maintained ones are worth reminding. The sterile, sterile view of the current opposition leader, reminding him of those views which have made Australia a stronger, better place, a society he would wreck with these arrogant, nasty views. Yeah. 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 The Honourable